Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Cynthia Riggs. I'm Cynthia Riggs. I'm from Martha's Vineyard, and I'm one of these rare natives of the island. I was born there. I've, I, loved, I loved hearing the moth, but I never thought of myself as being involved in it uh, until I think one of the commentators, Shelley Christensen, emailed me and said, Cynthia, I think you have a couple of stories you, you might like to share with the moth. And I said, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> but I did, and here I am. Now, just about a year ago, a real-life mystery sort of popped into my life. I got a packet in the mail from this guy. Now, the packet had his name on it, but it also had, for an address, latitude and longitude. <laughs> I was curious, of course. I opened the packet, and inside it uh, was a... a archival plastic envelope full of paper towels. <laughs> this still meant nothing to me. I took the paper towels out, and on them were all these coded messages in pencil and cryptograms. And along with it was a new message with a new cryptogram on it. The moth said, well, we were interested in, in the story that you wanted to tell about this man who came back into your life after 62 years. So I said, okay. So they, uh, they suggested that I, I try to come up with the story and sort of frame it into a time frame of about 10 minutes and uh, made suggestions saying, could you emphasize this and maybe cut that? So it, it worked pretty well. When I was 18, I was a college student clueless, more uh, unusually clueless for 18-year-olds. I went to Antioch College, uh, which is in Ohio, majoring in marine geology. <laughs> <laughs> and they somehow had found a job for me sorting plankton at Scripps Oceanographic Institution in California. I got to the lab, and the guys who'd been working there were looking for a distraction and I was it. <laughs> I, they did all these practical jokes on me. They were nailing my lab drawers shut and just doing all kinds of crazy things. But there was one older gentleman there, he was practically my father's age as far as I was concerned, who took pity on me. And he started defending me against all these, these people who were plaguing me. So I sent this secret message to this man something stupid like, uh, I hope you can decode this message. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, he wrote back and we had quite a correspondence. So I, I looked at the one message that was the new one and I decoded it. And the message said, I have never stopped loving you. I used to have terrible stage fright, and then I realized that it is, it's up to the person on the stage to make his or her audience feel comfortable, that you're, you're sort of the host or hostess, because people in the audience almost invariably are worried about you. So it really it behooves you, the speaker, to, to, to try to make them at ease. And all of a sudden, it was, it was easy, and it was fun because then I could, I could work back and forth with the audience. I have to tell you something about my life. I was married for 25 years to this brilliant man, but a very abusive guy, and after 25 years, I was divorced. And for 35 years, this guy stalked me. And so I was off men. Now, I have a group of uh, women, mostly, all, who meet at my house as a writer's group. <laughs> I showed them this packet, and I, you know, I didn't know what to make of it. I said, what do you think of it? And Lisa, one of the group members, said, that is the most romantic thing I've ever heard of. This is every woman's fantasy to have a man come back into her life saying he loves her. You've got to get in touch with him. As a storyteller, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what makes a great story. I think the storytellers who do a good job 
uh, don't give away too much at the beginning. They sort of build the story up and you, you sort of wonder, and what happens next? Then I remembered that when he was working at the Scripps lab, he had said he had a degree in dentistry that he'd gotten during the Army. So I figured, all right, I'll try the California Dental Association, and I found him. So I wrote this kind of non-committal note saying I got the package. <laughs> I got this postcard back shortly, and the postcard was a picture of Sedona, Arizona. Uh, and on the card, it said, nicer than nice to hear from you. Love, Howie. Now, I had a daughter who died about five years ago. Her husband and I put together a book of her poetry as a memorial to Mary. One of her poems was called Meeting My Father in Sedona. So I thought, well, this would be an appropriate thing to send Howie, so I sent it to him. He wrote back and he said, I had a son who died at the same time, the same age as your daughter Mary. The storytellers who do a good job, they have to figure some way of having a satisfactory ending so that whoever is listening to the story thinks, ah, that, that's good. So I decided I would go see my, my daughter in Santa Barbara and I just mentioned to Howie in one of our emails that I'm going to Santa Barbara. So he sent me uh, money for a train fare to go from Santa Barbara down to San Diego, where he lived, about a five-hour train ride. I got on that train, and all of a sudden I got really cold feet. I'm thinking, the last time Howie saw me, I was 18. <laughs> I am now 81. <laughs> what is this guy going to think? How do I get out of this at this point? I knew we were compatible mentally, but you, you know, that's not all you need. <laughs> I actually had kind of prepared myself because I bought a blue lace nightie. <laughs> Well, Howie, Howie met me at the train station, and he was driving a camper. And he, he leaned across the driver's side, and he had a long-stemmed red rose. He also had a sign that was about, oh, 12 inches long. And on the sign were our code words for hugs and kisses. And then he turned the sign over, and there was our code word for passion. <laughs> I want to let people know that Howie has made a difference in my life. Whatever, whatever happens, he's made a difference in my life. You know, this, this shell I had built up, uh, he's, he's just, just by gentleness and sensitivity, he's, he's sort of broken through that shell, and I'm a different person. I'm Cynthia Riggs from Martha's Vineyard, and you're watching Thinker.